Hello everyone, welcome to this episode. Now in this episode, we are going to talk about delayed processing. So let's understand why delayed processing is important and why would you need to use delayed processing in our application architectures? What are the ways to implement delayed processing? And then we'll take an example where we implement delayed processing with SQSQ. Let's get started. So what really is delayed processing? Now, when we are building distributed applications, we sometimes rely on third party systems and this, this third party system we probably are not controlling them and they could have outages throttling issues so on and so forth so when you are processing our requests particularly asynchronously when these systems face outages or throttling then these uh, asynchronous requests are not getting processed properly either we'll retry a couple of times and still again if the systems are not responding we will be particularly, you know, sending to a DLQ for later observation. With delayed processing, we can introduce some delays and then process those requests again. So that comes in handy, particularly when there are outages in the third party systems and those are not resolved within a few minutes or so. Or like I mentioned, during a high volume period, those third party systems may be throttling. So we wanted to distribute the traffic evenly so in that case also we can use delayed processing and there could be some scenarios uh, where you would face some race conditions so let's say now your processing request has to rely on another feed and that feed is almost come in the same time so sometimes when you're trying to process it the previous feed has not yet arrived so you have to wait for a few seconds or few minutes and then retry it so in such a case as also, this delayed processing comes in handy. And then it's going to provide you another additional layer of uh, failure handling on top of uh, retries. Of course, you can introduce retries. You can do retries a couple of times with exponential backoffs and all that. And if they are also not enough, then you can uh, fall back to delayed processing. So essentially, it's going to in increase our reliability and the fault tolerance of our applications. And next, there could be some business requirement. You don't want to process certain requests right away. You have to introduce some delay and then process it. And there could be various other reasons, but I think these are the main points that we would introduce delayed processing. All right, so let's talk about implementation. So what are the ways that we can implement delayed processing? Now, here are some popular methods. We can use AW step function and a step function has this wait state. And particularly if you're using standard uh, step function, you can wait up to, I think, uh, one year or so. And you're not getting charged for this, uh, you know, the wait time. So that's indeed a good way of uh, implementing delayed processing. And then you can also use uh, event bridge scheduler. So event bridge scheduler, it's essentially you can uh, schedule an event, let's say to be fired after 30 minutes or one hour or certain point in time with a timestamp or so. So at that point also, you can uh, process that request later on. And then we have SQSQ delayed processing. So SQSQ has this uh, inbuilt feature called uh, the delayed seconds. So whenever you are enqueuing a message to the SQSQ, you can define this uh, delayed second. You can delay a message up to 15 minutes. So that's also really coming in handy, uh, particularly if you want to introduce this delayed processing with minimum changes to your architecture. So let's uh, see an example on that. So let's say we have a, a Lambda function that is connect to a, connected to a MSK topic. So this is uh, the managed Kafka topic, or this could be uh, you know, DynamoDB stream, or it could be Kinesis stream, whatever. And um, this Lambda function is getting invoked uh, with event source mapping. So we are connecting. So whenever the messages are available in this particular topic, Event source mapper pull those messages and invoke this uh, lambda function. So then this lambda function try to process those requests. And let's say this uh, lambda function, the business logic rely on third party service. Now, in order to properly process the message, we would need the response from the third party service. And in case these third party services are not offline or experience an outage or uh, introducing some throttling, then we can do two things one is we can do retries so we will uh, retry a couple of times with exponential backoffs with retry delays 
and then if those are not also successful we'll be putting into a DLQ. Now the number of times that we can do retries in a lambda function is also a concern because longer you retry there will be more uh, lambda execution time right the duration is going to be increased so your cost is also going to be increased as well because lambdas are charged based on the execution time and in addition to that particularly when you are processing and stream uh, in an ordered manner so the rest of the messages in the stream will be waiting until this uh, message is being processed so that's going to increase the offset lags or the iterator age of the messages that are already in the stream so we don't want to create additional lags so that uh, you know defining number of retries with exponential back off needs to be carefully uh, thought about so this is the problem let's say now these messages needs to be processed and these are some business critical messages so we don't want to miss any of these messages just because of the third party service outages and so on so how do we resolve this so that's where in this example we can introduce a delayed processing so here I'm using delayed processing with SQSQ because it's quite forward to quite uh, straightforward to introduce delayed processing. Essentially, now that you already have a DLQ, when you are enqueuing a message to DLQ, you can define the delayed second here. Now, in addition to that, you can define the delayed second at the queue level as well. So all the messages that you are uh, enqueuing to the queue without specifying a delayed second will also uh, have that delay. But if you don't want to do that, you can define the message level. For each message, you can define the delayed second. So message will be appearing in the DLQ after those after that amount of time elapsed. And then you can have another Lambda function and uh, process these messages and either uh, send it to another retry topic. So maybe the same consumer Lambda can consume these uh, delayed messages and then uh, maybe send an uh, email afterwards. So this is an example of uh, using delayed processing with SQSQ. Now, probably uh, you might not need to send to another topic. Probably you can send it to the same topic. But uh, in that case, you have to make sure there are no other consumers relying on the same topic, right? Because otherwise they will also be processing the same message twice. Okay. Why SQSQ? Like I mentioned, SQSQ has this delayed processing capability in inbuilt. So I'll show you shortly. And then particularly if you are already using a DLQ, then uh, you would need minimum changes to existing architectures. Essentially, uh, you just have to add a one simple attribute called uh, delayed second, and that's it. Then all the messages will be added to the DLQ after a second, after that amount of time. And also, SQSQ delayed processing feature does not cost you anything. It's uh, free of charge. Okay, so this is what I want to uh, talk about in this episode. But let me quickly show you how do you configure delayed uh, seconds at the queue level? So I have this SQS queue called my delayed queue. And if I edit its configuration, you can see there is this option delivery delay. So this delivery delay can be from 0 second to 15 minutes. So the catch here with the SQS queue is that the maximum amount of time that you can wait is 15 minutes. So if you set it to 15 minutes, then the message will be added to the queue after 15 minutes and then your consumers for the SQS queue pick it up from there. Now in this case, I set it to one minute. So the messages will be added after a minute. And uh, let me show you how to do that. So here I have an example script here. So here I'm using a SQS queue client and this is my queue URL. And I'm just uh, sending a message called hello world. And these are the regular uh, attributes. So you are defining the message body, queue URL, and message attributes. Attributes are the metadata really. Uh, now, in addition to that, you can define a delay second. So you can say a delay second is set to zero. So that means uh, the message will be added real time. So there are no any delay introduced. And if you set it to, let's say, uh, 30 seconds or so, the message will be added after 30 seconds. Now, when you set this delayed second 30 seconds here at the message level, it is going to override your queue level configuration. That's also something to remember. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this one. Note, delay queue chase. 
and now it's successfully added as you can see here so let's see after 30 seconds it should be uh, available in our queue so i'll go to send and receive messages and let's poll for messages it's still not here so let's uh, click on this for a couple of time so after 30 seconds it should be present so let for a few more seconds try again there you go now it's available so i can open this message and this is the message body and the attribute so in this case i said this retrieval to true so i can use this metadata to further process this message now if i set the delayed second to zero and send the second message this should be immediately available because now we are not introducing any delays so let's do a poll and here we go so we have the other message also available right away all right so this is what i want to show you guys so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode